Vercel just released Next.js 14, and they basically just confirmed that they're going all in on the server. So let's talk about the future of Next.js and if it's something you should be excited or concerned about. Let's reflect a little bit on where we've been with Next.js. Now, I've always kind of credited Next.js personally with being a framework that allows you to do it all in such a really good way. I think it was one of the first really flexible frameworks that gave us the combination of being able to do static site generation as well as server-side rendering. If you're interested in the difference between those, I've got a video that you can watch and learn the difference in just a couple of minutes. But I think they did such an amazing job of giving us that developer flexibility but then they kind of hit a big left turn and kind of left a lot of us wondering what the future of Next.js holds and what adoption of future versions of Next.js would be. And that brings us into the world of server components and server actions. Now, server components and the app directory got introduced in version 13. And this is the ability to have React run on the server and then stream updates after it's done making asynchronous calls to the browser and being able to display things there. In theory, this makes things faster. It adds for isolation and layouts and that sort of stuff. And I think we've still got a little bit of question of how far we've come with that and what the future of that looks like. Now, one of the big callouts in the Next.js 14 announcements is that server actions are stable. Now, this is the ability to basically define a function in your JavaScript that's going to be a handler for a form submission, but that handler is only gonna be run on the server. And that has led to what has now become basically a big meme and a big cause of debate in the developer communities with the best way we should be doing this with Next.js and any other technology. And so you can see in the snippet here, we've got a form action, which is just a function that it is connected to. It's written in line, which I personally wouldn't do. And you have this annotation that says this function is a use server annotation, which means it's only gonna be run on the server. And then you have a SQL statement right inside of your React. Now, hopefully this is obvious, but we would never do SQL queries directly from the actual client, the browser. And that's because we need private credentials, hopefully, to be able to access whatever database you're trying to query. And those private credentials should never be shipped to the browser. They're stored secretly in environment variables on the server. So when we get into this code snippet, it looks so dangerous because it looks like we have SQL running in the browser. And even if we're clear that it only runs on the server, it now is really mixing what we've thought about of React for all these years with what maybe the future of React inside of Next.js looks like. And that is a blending of React being used on the server and on the client. So if you paid attention to what Next.js 13 and now 14 have launched, or in this case, specifically with server actions just made them stable, they're really going all in on the server side capability. React Server Components allows you to run React on the server, including asynchronous queries. Next.js is automatically handling loading state and suspense boundaries and stuff for you so that you can define a loader and it will display and then get updated by streamed updates from the server. So everything that they're doing is really pushing us in this direction. And although we still have access to get server side props and get static props, I think those are going to go away in the not so long future. I think it's obvious that Next.js is making this full bet on the server on changing the way that we do or how we think about building React applications in a way that they think is gonna be the future. And this reminds me of AngularJS migrating to Angular 2 and how big of a transition point that was. But Angular thought at the time, this is the direction that we need to go, so it's worth making this big switch so that we can get towards our future state. And that's what this feels like with Next.js. So inside of the Next.js 14 announcements, you see that server actions became stable. They've got some updates to TurboPack, which I still haven't used myself. And then they have partial rendering preview, which I need to look into more, but gets more into the streaming of dynamic content, which is being able to run logic on the server and streaming that to the browser. So this is yet another example of server first capabilities being introduced into Next.js. Now, the last thing I look at is the Next.js Learn. And this is a piece of documentation that talks about how to build applications with Next.js. If you hadn't really believed me so far about the future of Next.js, you can kind of pay attention to all the time they must have invested in this and then look at the topics that they're covering. So they're talking about server components. They talk about the different types of rendering and they talk about streaming, another buzzword for their focus on the server. So I think... One, I'm looking forward to going through some of this content because if you look at it, it looks pretty in depth. And if you look at the start learning and go to what we're building, you build a full dashboard. And I imagine this is gonna be very, very valuable content. So 
Next.js is betting everything on the server. How do we feel about it? Well, a lot of people have this idea of JavaScript not becoming what PHP was years ago, and we have concerns about the merging of React code with server-side code, et cetera. I almost think it's kind of the opposite. Instead of bringing server-side code to the browser, we're bringing React more to the server, which I think is an interesting implication. And I think the tooling around this, as always, will continue to evolve and continue to get better. And I think all frameworks across the board are really betting on the server. You're seeing more frameworks like Remix or Next.js or Astro focus more on server-side capabilities. So what Next.js is doing, I don't think is that unique in the sense of doing more on the server. I think that's just where the industry and modern frameworks are going. So if you're a little hesitant, it might be time to look more into this because it's probably gonna be something you're gonna have to learn and use in the not too distant future. So I'm curious with all the announcement and kind of the hype and debate about Next.js 14 and server components and server actions, what are your thoughts on where it is right now and where it's gonna be in a couple of years and how do you feel about that? If you're interested in learning more about Next.js 14, I'm actually doing a build in public project that I just upgraded to Next.js 14 where I'm using server actions and React server components and anything else that I can get my hands on. So if you want updates on that and want to keep track of it, you can sign up for my newsletter at jamesqquick.com newsletter, and I'll send you weekly updates on what I'm working on and recent content that I have, a lot of which will be focused on Next.js 14 and beyond. So anyways, that's the quick rundown from my perspective on where Next.js is with version 14 and where they're going and focusing on for the future. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll catch you in the next one.